In an earlier video I talked about a shape called Gabriel's horn, which is the surface of revolution of the curve y equals 1 over x for values of x greater than or equal to 1. Today's topic is another interesting 3D shape known as the pseudosphere. Gabriel's horn and the pseudosphere have something important in common. They both have negative curvature. As the name meaning false sphere suggests, the pseudosphere and the sphere are closely connected. What distinguishes them is the nature of their curvature. A sphere has positive curvature at every point. In other words, its surface always stays on one side of a plane, known as a tangent plane, that just touches the surface at any point. In contrast, a surface has negative curvature at a point if the surface curves away from the tangent plane in two different directions. Not only does a sphere have positive curvature everywhere, but it also has constant positive curvature, equal in value to plus 1 over r, where r is the sphere's radius. The pseudosphere is exactly the opposite, having everywhere a constant negative curvature equal to minus 1 over r. For a given value of r, the sphere and pseudosphere enclose the same volume. However, whereas a sphere has a closed surface and a finite area, a pseudosphere has an open surface and a finite area. As far as area goes, by the way, the pseudosphere differs from Gabriel's horn because it narrows off more quickly. Another result of the pseudosphere's negative curvature is that the angles of a triangle drawn on its surface add up to less than 180 degrees. On a sphere, a triangle's angles sum to more than 180 degrees. The geometry on the surfaces of both the sphere and the pseudosphere don't follow the rules prescribed by Euclid, which apply only to a flat plane. Both are examples of non-Euclidean geometry spherical or elliptical geometry in the case of the sphere, and hyperbolic geometry in the case of the pseudosphere. Scientists since the time of Albert Einstein have been aware of the fact that the space in which we live is curved by the presence of what it contains, namely matter and energy. What remains uncertain, however, is the overall shape of the universe, a fact that is governed by the average density of matter and energy that it contains. It could be a shape that's analogous to a sphere, a pseudosphere or saddle shape, or a flat plane. The best observational data available at present suggests that the universe is almost exactly flat, which if true means that it will expand forever. In the same way that Gabriel's horn is the surface of revolution of part of the curve y equals 1 over x, so the pseudosphere comes from rotating a curve known as the tractrix, about the axis which it approaches more and more closely without ever touching. The tractrix is the answer to a question asked by the Frenchman Claude Perrault. Not known as a giant of mathematics, Perrault trained as a doctor and gained a minor reputation as an architect and an anatomist. Before dying in unusual style as a result of an infection he caught while dissecting a camel. His greatest claim to fame, aside from his connection with the Tractrix, is that he was the brother of the author of Cinderella and Puss in Boots. In 1676, at about the time the German mathematician and polymath Gottfried Leibniz was doing groundbreaking work on the calculus, Perrault placed his pocket watch on the middle of a table, pulled the end of its chain along the edge of the table and asked, what is the shape of the curve traced by the watch? The first known correct answer to Perrault's question came in a letter to a friend in 1693 by the Dutch physicist, astronomer and mathematician Christian Huygens, who also coined the name Tractrix from the Latin tractus for something that's pulled along. The corresponding German name is Hundkurve or hound curve, which makes sense if you imagine the path a dog might follow on its leash as its owner walks away. The tractrix is closely related to another interesting curve known as the catenary, which is the shape taken up by a free-hanging chain. In fact, the name comes from the Latin catena for chain. Power cables suspended from pylons also form a catenary, 
as does the path of a moving charge in a uniform electric field. A tractrix can be drawn starting from a catenary in a very simple way. Imagine you've fixed a piece of string at one end to a point on the catenary. Pull the string out so that it forms a tangent to the curve where it's attached. Then wind up the string, being careful always to keep it taut. The path followed by the end of the string will be a tractrix. If you were to do the same thing starting with a circle, the result would be a type of spiral. Or think of the path that a goat tethered to a post would follow if it walked around and around in the same direction, keeping its tether taut until it wound its way to the center. In both cases, the shape obtained is known as the involute of the original curve. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip into the land of unusual geometries. If you'd like to see more from our Discover Maths channel, make sure you've subscribed, and I'll see you again very soon.